There we are. We're live. All right. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Happy Sunday afternoon to Handmade Home Shopping here on Faith Productions. I am your host, Fairy Princess Lolly, and I am so happy to be back today in the seat. Author Reads was on Friday. I'm here for Handmade Hi, Home yes. Shopping today. So, <clears throat> um, uh oh. <laughs> uh, before we get started today, I just uh, a couple things are classic. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for us if you would like to get notifications of our future shows. And um, also, uh, today's show sponsor is Rebecca Hefner. She is an author. She's actually been here on our Author Reads show before, <clears throat> before in the past. That's a weird sounding statement, but uh, <laughs> um, she, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, Rebecca Hefner is an author who loves to combine fantasy and romance into compelling novels with complex anti-heroes and anti-heroines who eventually choose light over darkness. Um, after some intense internal struggles, conflict, of course, um, please uh, join her. She asks uh, on her journey through time and other worlds as you root for the flawed yet resilient characters of Etheria's Earth. And Etheria's Earth is the realm that she has created for her books. I, I remember her interview, we had the coolest conversation about her world building and whatnot. So um, please check her out. All of her information is going in the ticker. It is also in the low bar for you guys to find at any point before, during, after the show. Yes, you could have found this before the show. Um, <clears throat> What is time? Time is nothing. And uh, last of all, I just want to say, guys, um, please wear your mask when you're out there. We actually had one of our housemates yesterday um, tested positive for COVID. So we are now all seriously um, locked here uh, uh, in our house. Oops, this is not what I meant to push. Um, it's, a real, it's a real thing. So uh, please just keep in mind that when you do that, you are helping out the world. So with that said, uh, we will jump into today's show which with our very first vendor of the day, which is Stormy Faye from Vault of the Faye. Hello, Stormy. Hello. Welcome, welcome back to the show. We've had you here in the past. It's good to see you again. Always good to see you. Princess. I know, I love your beautiful forest that you have there. It's, I, 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 I want a beautiful forest behind me too. I mean, I sort of have that, I guess. <laughs> uh, well, so, um. Please, if you will, introduce yourself to the audience. Tell our folks watching at home uh, who you are and where you're from. And then let's, uh, I'll turn the screen over to you and we'll take a look at what product you've got for us today. Cause I know you got some new stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am Stormy Faye and I am with Vault of the Faye. We are just a group of like-minded fairies who like to craft and create stories. So it's not just my stuff. I actually like to include other people's stuff as well. And basically our little story for Vault of the Fae is back in the day, magic was very, very real, very abundant. And that was because the Fae and the humans worked together, but they had their differences and the Fae decided to take all their magic items back and hide it in a vault. Well, me and my friends found the vault and now we're bringing magic back into the world. <laughs> I love it. I love this story. Although now I'm I'm sort of thinking because of the many things that happen in the hedge, uh, we're going to have to start giving you things to store in the vault for safety. <laughs> Ooh, I love that idea. <clears throat> right? Yeah, well, because we've got uh, quite the collection of things that everybody has been finding. So enough of that. Let's see what you've got for us today. As you can see, I'm going to be very galaxy themed today. Um, I'm going to start off with my biggest piece that I have right now that I'm really, I have up on my Etsy now on Vaults of the Fae. This Whoa. is hand-painted, it's hand-painted on wood. It's kind of hard is it there. cut out there in the, like it, you'd see through like their eyes that are closed and sleeping? Yes. So in the back here, we've got some LEDs. <gasps> oh, beautiful. Close. And hand painted, each little star piece there was hand placed. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and so, and then this is the back so that you can actually, when the batteries die, you can either replace them or if you just want to rip it all out, it's easy to take off. So that's that. Nice, one. and it has its little hanging hook and everything. So, yeah. yeah. Ready for your wall. <laughs> right? 
Um, and then these are going up this week oh, yeah. on the vault. We got some Galaxy little makeup bag, pen bag, whatever you want. Coin purse, nice. Coin purse, yes. Also hand painted. Everything here is handmade and hand painted. Um, got some incense burners. Oh. There we go. Oh, yes. We burn a lot of incense in this house. So that is, uh, now, I'm, now I'm looking at those going, well, we went looking for a new incense holder the other day and I they were all boring. So those are not boring. They are very pretty. <laughs> so, I mean, if you want one, just let me know. I can even make you whatever color you want. If any of these items anybody likes, if you want a different color, I have extra blanks of all these items so that I can actually paint whatever color you would prefer. Oh, nice. Um, these guys are probably my favorites. These are my galaxy fairy doors. Oh, oh my God. Those are the best. And um, I used water resistant Mod Podge so you can actually have them out in your garden as long as you're not like, you know, Ooh. crazy downpours of rain. I would right. Recommend. But they are <laughs> water resistant at least. So a couple splashes won't hurt them. Can I see what they look like on the back side of those? Um, this one I put glitter on. I'm going to put some on this side too. But they're nice and flat. So that yes. I've, I've seen doors before that were not, they had like weird ledges on the back side. And I thought, sure. how did that even work? But uh, that, which is what I was asking. So, um, but those look pretty straightforward. Yep. <laughs> there we go. And this is actually my last jar. I'm going to need to make some more hand-painted jars. Um, oh, there we go. I was like, wait, come back. That was too quick. <laughs> like, how do I? I'm trying to figure out the best light. No, you got it. We can see it. Yeah. yeah, and it's got all the little stars like the painting did as well. Yep. I had. I sold all the green ones. You think you got one of them, and I just sold the last one. And so these ones are empty. You can put whatever you want in them, keep them safe, and nobody can really see what's inside. <laughs> Secret jars. I've got Ooh. some filled galaxy jars from the nebulas we collected. We scooped up some nebulas from space. The space fairies helped us out, and um, we put them in these jars for you. And then I, much, I not much, I resined the top. So it, it looks a lot prettier oh. in person. <laughs> It looks beautiful here, though. We can I can see all of the stuff that's embedded in that, just yes. fine. Yeah. So I made so that this and is a, I, made, I, made, I made a sticker and I put the sticker on top and then I did the then I wrapped it in ribbon and I coated it all in resin. Those are so cool. I want to meet space fairies. They're great. They are very cool. <laughs> they speak really fast and they're really hard to understand. <clears throat> They're a little bit more advanced, but they are a delight to work with. <laughs> I try to, I, I'm trying not to imagine space fairies as something from Flash. Oh. <laughs> so, well, um, <clears throat> do you have more to show us or would you, we have, uh, would you like to take a quick, quick words, quick sneak peek at your Instagram maybe? Um, yeah, our Instagram or Etsy, whichever you want to. Okay. show off we've got, we've got both our instagram is a lot of like our models and just products in the work and then um then the the finished we go. obviously over on our etsy but there we are okay so just making sure i had it shared i always like to look at works in progress too Ooh, what are these these are cool oh our little so um, I only have one of the one of the Octobuddies left. Actually, I think he's right here. I can show him later. Um, and then I can make some more. They're, they're uh, Mermaid Ice Spy bottles. So you actually, they're full of sand that I collected and you rotate them and there's treasure inside. So it's kind of like a relaxing ice spy game. Yeah, that's cool. I like your little Octobuddies too. That guy's pretty cute. <laughs> they're precious. <laughs> They were handmade, actually. Those ones were handmade by my mermaid, Lyra. Um, she's very talented. She even she has a tail and everything, swims in the ocean. Very, very good. Um, very strong legs that, that mermaid has. Fins, I guess. I don't know how she swims in the ocean with that big old tail. <laughs> oh, these are, the, these are some of your cool headdresses, too. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we have headdresses, 
Um, there are a few that we just took down because the one of our girls just moved, so everything's packed. Oh. But we're going to put them back up in a few weeks, so we'll have some more headdresses coming up in a few weeks here. But I do have a couple up still on Etsy that you can look at. Nice. Well, um, for those of you watching at home, so you're participating in the magic word, of course. Uh, those of you watching at home, our magic word is the same magic word it was last week because as you guys probably all know, we all fell ill last week and no, we did not do any shows. <laughs> so, so we kind of like have a week of that we have to gloss over. So the magic word is the same. It is still wing envy. And what that means is if you guys shop with uh, Stormy and the Vault of Fay during this next week, just put the word wing envy into the comments on Etsy and you will receive some sort of a cool little bonus magical gift, which I can attest to because I have personally shopped with Stormy and she is very fun with sending the little bonus gifts uh, along with her packages. So um, <clears throat> Stormy, is there anything you would like to say to everybody before we let you go today? Um, just that, uh, just so you know, everything's custom made. So if you want something specific, just let us know. I love a challenge. Um, we also make wands. So if you want some a specific themed wand, we can do that. And just feel free to reach out and we'd love to work with you. All right. That sounds awesome. So it's getting time to start buying those gifts early, right? Beat the rush. Yeah, so. <laughs> One of a kind. You'll never get them anywhere else. <laughs> All right. We will let you go and have a good Sunday afternoon. Thanks, Lolly. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, we are off to a good start this afternoon. That makes me feel it's beautiful outside here where we are. And so that is, this is a kind of a smiley day. So um, our second vendor here today is uh, Jaybirds Soaps and Sundries. And Yvonne, do I see you down there? I do, okay. <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Look at you, you're so adorable too. Everybody's oh, adorable you. today. <laughs> Thanks, this is my get ready for Hallmark movies outfit. <laughs> well, I, I like it. It looks warm and cozy and cabin-like. Thank you. Thank and you. Quite, frankly, I would love to be somewhere far, far away in a cabin. <laughs> Hello, Christina. I see you out there. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. Um, so, Yvonne, please, if you will, introduce yourself to everybody and uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and where you're from. Give a shout out to any of your home home fairs, events, etc. People, I don't know. Um, okay. Hi, mom. You know, <laughs> mom's and probably not tuning in, but um, I will give a shout out to RL Tabor and Company. Um, they kind of really helped me sort of um, get started in this whole thing. We do typically I um, do the um, you know the rent fairs and stuff, but I really got started on doing the rendezvous, which are oh, yeah. okay. Okay. So, well, I know but, what a rendezvous is. I, uh, people at home might not. So, go ahead and okay, explain. So, it's essentially reenactment of the fur trade era. So, yes. really, just about anything pre 1840. But my product line kind of evolved into something a little more whimsical. And so, it's a little, it's just a little more fitting at, at the fairs, you know, as opposed to rendezvous. Not that rendezvous isn't fun because it is, I love it. Yes. But um, so, anyway, I make bath and body products. Okay. Um, you know, cold process. So body spray, sugar scrubs, things like that. I mean, so let's be clear. They probably need some of those at rendezvous, to be perfectly honest. Yes. <laughs> I, yes, they do. I have yes. been to a rendezvous and they they can definitely get out there and get woodsmen. So. <laughs> yes. It, and it's usually in some just dusty, dry, no water anywhere. Yeah. And it's hot a lot of times. So. But, um, but this is the kind of thing that I make. I make um, cold process soaps. Okay, so, I'm turning um, this over to you so we can, you've got the whole thing now, it's all you. Okay, so um, cold process soap, this is just um, one of them. Everything is made from scratch. In my home, I try to source my products as locally and as responsibly as possible. I tend to avoid the palm oils and things like that, but. Mm -hmm. um, can you what um, describe what it means, cold process soap so, versus? Versus melt and pour. So okay. there's melt and pour soap and there's cold process soap and then there's hot process soap. So hot process and cold process, you start with your fat and your lye. And then you, you mix those together. You I came up with, you know, my own recipe. Everybody's kind of got their own recipe, but right. it the oh, lye okay. actually converts the fat into soap. 
Oh, okay. So once cool. it's become soap, there's no more lye anymore. There's no more oil anymore. It's like, you know, it's like when you make react, this is science. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but melt and pour, I mean, there's nothing wrong with melt and pour. It's just that particular process. The soap is already essentially made for you. You just, you know, cut it up, melt it down and pour it into a mold. It's still soap. But um, when you're making it from scratch, you do use lye and, you know, all whatever kind of fats, oils you want. You can make soap out of, you know, bacon grease. Honestly, you can. Ew. So I know, but once it becomes soap, it's no longer ew. <laughs> they it's, it's good stuff. Like but, um, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, no, usually it, it goes through this process where it's just, it's it no longer is that way. It no longer oh. smells. In fact, um, lard is one of the ingredients in my base soap recipe. My base soap recipe is olive oil, coconut oil, and lard, and it makes a really great soap, and it doesn't smell like lard. <laughs> I, I, that is awesome and crazy. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm it's, a pretty, <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty cool process, but I do make the soaps. I make um, bath bombs. These are some of the hand-painted bath bombs that I've made recently, just little cherry blossom. But so these... Cool. I thank you. I'm really proud of my bath bombs. They will rival Lush's bath bombs all day, all day. That lots of bubbles, awesome. lots of color, conditions the water. It it won't stain your tub, you know. And then the smell really just kind of stays on you all day. It's it's pretty cool. Eat your heart out, Lush. <laughs> right, right. So, but what I'm really super excited about is Christmas coming, and most of my products have a um, a pinup theme as far as the labeling. Uh -huh. um, um, and they, they push the envelope a little bit. So this one is Skyrockets in Flight. I like now, your you packaging. Know, thank you. Thank you. I've, I've worked pretty hard on de designing all this stuff up. I tend to really love the pin up, the pinups. They're just super fun. But well, you, they're not put, they're not too, I don't think they are too racy. You can show them. They're not too racy, except for like this one is from my Mean Girls collection. It's called Boo You Whore. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> but you know, it smells like gummy bears and perfume. Oh, yum. <laughs> and then uh, felted soaps. Have you ever seen the I felted love soaps? felted soaps. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yes. I love these. They last. No, for they're me. so good for fair they because, yeah, sorry, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, they come in their own packaging. And the cool thing about this is once the soap is gone, you know, the yeah. wool shrinks and it, you know, yeah. kind of follows the soap. Once it's gone, you've got a scrubby pad, you've got a dryer ball, you've got whatever. Either way, it's something that's not going to end up in a landfill, you know? Yes. So I, I really, and these are these are really fun to make, very therapeutic. If you've ever made them, you just- I have never them. made them, but I have bought many of them. I love felted soaps. Yeah. I, they're, they're great. They're, and they're, they're perfect. They're, they're basically what I prefer to keep for my soaps when I am at Ren Fair because you- the, the soap kind of stays contained in that felt, like when you're it done washing it, it doesn't get slimy all over everything, you know? Yep. It, yeah, I love felt yeah. soaps. I do too. <clears throat> so let's see, what else have I got here? Just super quick. So I've got the, I've got body sprays too. Ooh. So just body sprays. This one is also part of the Mean Girls collection on Wednesdays We Wear Pink. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it just That's smells a kind of bottle fun. too. Thank you. I try really hard to avoid as much plastic as I can. These are all glass bottles. Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, sometimes the plastic is unavoidable, but you know, I, I do what I can. And then also the body powders. These are so great. I'll show you this one. This is just one of the bottles. This one is um, Freshen Up the Downtown. Freshen you Up can use the Downtown. Freshen Up Sorry. the Downtown. Okay, well. To, so this is one of the women's one, and this is one of the men's. This is the anti-swamp crotch powder. <laughs> so this is anti-swamp crotch. We've got freshen up the downtown. I get it now. I get the joke. <laughs> and freshen up, and then freshen up the back alley. I was a I was a little bit slow on that train, but uh, that is genius. <laughs> so thank you. Once you get on board with my labels, you'll 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 kind of start following. But yeah. um, my most popular product to date has been my Mother's Day collection box. So I put this box together and it, I just filled it with some sugar scrubs and, you know, just bars of soap and it was really cool. So it says, great job, mom. I turned out awesome. But when you open it on the inside, it says, sorry, I wrecked your vagina. <laughs> 
so that oh, tends to gosh. be that tends to be the I thought I would bring that up so that everybody could just kind of see that tends to be the theme <laughs> of most of my products. So they're good Beautiful. stuff. They're really good quality. I absolutely stand behind all of my products, especially the sugar scrub. It's a foaming sugar scrub. So it's a soap, a lotion, and a scrub all in one. You get the benefits of the sugar exfoliation. You get the conditioning of the oils, but it also contains a liquid soap that I make. So uh -huh. it, rinses, it rinses clean. You don't uh -huh. have that, that oily, you know, that's I do know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, not that those type of sugar scrubs are bad, Right. I just think this is better. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just do. <laughs> well, so. that is, well, I like it. You stand by your product. So, I do. I do. Now, you also are participating in the magic word today. I am. So, all right. So um, I don't know if you want to show what your surprise is or if you want to keep it as a surprise. Uh, either way is okay. Well, um, I didn't grab one, but I'll tell you what it is. I'm going to put together okay. a big stack of um, soap samples. Oh, fun. So you'll get about six different slices, you know, good size little slices of, of different soaps. And I just kind of package them together. You know, they're great for travel or just, you know, trying out the soaps. So, yep, absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, just as a reminder to all you guys at home, the magic word this week is wing envy. So uh, put that magic word into the checkout comments when you make an order and you will get the awesome little bonus gift as well. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say to everybody before uh, before we let you go today? Um, just know that I'm really brand new at, at the whole marketing thing. I really, so far what I've done as far, if somebody wants to make it, make a purchase, message, find my Jaybirds page on Facebook. It's just Jaybird Soaps and Sundry. It's super easy to find. Message me, just send me a message on that and then we can communicate that way. I usually invoice through PayPal or uh, Venmo. I can do Square too. But um, that's just kind of how I've done it so far. I don't have a website yet. I don't have an Etsy page or anything like that yet. I've just been using the Facebook page. So, but I'll get there. One at a time. It's a big elephant and you just have to take one bite yeah, at a time. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. And well, thank you so much for this opportunity. This was so great. Yeah. No, thank you for coming on the show. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your, well, I, I'd say weekend, but we're kind of at the end of Sunday. So the yes, that's okay. Evening, lady. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Thank you too. Bye-bye. All right. We're bumping right along here. This is good. So uh, our next vendor this afternoon is CB Squared Crafts. Do I see you down there? I believe I do. Hello. How are Hello. you? Doing just fine. Just kind of chugging along on Sunday. Yeah, that's kind of where we're at here too. So, well, welcome to the show. Um, Thank you. Yeah, please, uh, if you will, introduce yourself to everybody and uh, well, uh, shout and tell us what you do. And okay, well, uh, my name's Chris Brown. Uh, I am the the day to day manager of CB Squared Crafts, along with my my partner uh, Kathy Barrow. Hence the name CB Squared. Um, <laughs> we are a uh, handcrafted and three D printed geekery uh, craft store. Uh, we do uh, handcrafted pop culture items from various books and fantasies. And also uh, I picked up 3D printing as a hobby. And so I've been, uh, uh, I've been creating and printing out various things for like gamers and knitters and a lot of different things that, you know, we, we create that a lot of folks can't get a hold of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> typically, uh, we're out of, um, Urbana, Illinois. So typically okay. you can find us at most conventions, um, in the Illinois, Indiana, or Ohio area. We just moved our, in the middle of a pandemic, perfect time to move. Uh, you guys do odd mall or corn on the cob. We did con, con, on, con on the cob last year was actually our first convention as a store. Uh, okay. We had actually just started and we had gotten all through 2019. We were ready to rock and roll. 2020 hit and COVID stopped us cold. We had everything set up. It was, it was one of those, oh, wow, we're ready to just hit all these conventions. And then it stopped. <laughs> so, um, so I've been working hard trying to get us uh, online until everything can go back to what is relatively normal at a convention. Um <laughs> <laughs> um, and we can go back. So, um, yeah, that's kind of us. I picked up the 3d printing as a, a side hobby for, uh, aftermarket nerf modifications. I'm a bit of a nerf enthusiast it's and 
you're saying are literally all of everything that is happening around you. Yeah. It's uh yeah. So um yeah, I know I'm not kind of one of your usual I, I've been watching some of your past episodes. I'm not one of your new usual folks that you come on. I guess if you were to say my workshop is kind of populated by gremlins and knockers, um, because <laughs> uh we, we've got a lot of technology in here. That is okay. I'm gonna turn the screen over to you and look okay. out for us today. Okay, well, um, I wanted to start off with some of our handcrafted items. Um, what we've got first off is one of our biggest sellers. If uh, you're familiar with the, the Dresden Files books by Jim Butcher, um, one of the main characters in the book uh, is Harry Dresden. He's a wizard in Chicago. One of his favorite places to eat is a place called McAnally's. McAnally's is what is considered in the supernatural realm in Chicago of accorded neutral territory. Matter of fact, it's one of the things that has showed up when a character walks into his bar. Uh, they see a sign that says accorded neutral territory by the unseelie accords. So uh, we came up with the idea. We inspired by that. We have um, accorded neutral territory, uh, carved wooden signs oh my uh, god we use uh reclaimed wood whenever humanly possible so uh, and then we will cut them down to a 12 by 4 inch placard like this uh hand carve them with dremels uh in an uh old english font uh, we also do latin and celtic at the moment um and we then that's so bad for our festival <laughs> our fairy yeah. festival yeah <laughs> um and then we stain them uh i hand paint the letters uh, we just add, and then we'll add a couple of hangers, and that way you can hang them on a wall, outside, wherever. Uh, matter of fact, that's kind of one of the things I've been kind of trying to cook up for uh, our holiday marketing is, you know, hey, you tired of having your in-laws argue with you during the holidays? Buy one of our signs, and that way you can tell them that this is accorded neutral territory, no <laughs> arguing allowed. Um, so... Uh, that's one of our biggest sellers. If you're, if you're into books and things like that, one of the other things I like to do is I create dragon eggs. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, this is one of my dragons. This is kind of a work in progress. I, I theme them out of the different elements. And so I've got four, the four elements and then also light and shadow. Um, what I'll do is I'll create the dragon eggs. This is actually a foam craft egg and about four hours worth of thumbtacks. Uh, <laughs> and sore. Um, so then I paint it with whatever element that I'm feeling. And then I use various craft objects to come up with a one of a kind, uh, nest for the egg itself. Um, so like, for example, this was actually going to end up being a fire egg. The idea I have for this, is it's going to be uh, nestled in a lantern, uh, amongst some lava rocks, things like that. Um, so those are, are kind of our handcrafted items at the moment. Um, we're still working on a few here and there. For the 3D printed stuff, I have a ton. Uh, this has become my my day to day thing. Um, so a lot of our more popular items are for gamers, for like D and D enthusiasts, uh, board gamers, whatever. Uh, so a lot of the items that we have are what are called dice towers. Um, yeah. So uh, one that we have that a lot of folks dig is this is a uh, a Hogwarts inspired. Yes, how cool. It looks like uh, a book. Yep, it's a Hogwarts textbook themed uh, dice tower. And uh, this is actually printed out of a wood filament. So this actually has kind of like a hard cardboard texture when you feel it. And actually smells a little bit like wood. It's one of my favorite filaments to work with. Um, so there is that. And then one of our personal favorites, if you like dragons, this is what? our this is our chubby dragon uh, dice tower. Everybody loves him. He is always hungry. You yeah. drop you drop the dice in his mouth, and this is for the 12-year-old in all of us. Let me see if I can do this with it being held up, but he poops <laughs> dice. Um, so, yeah. he it, it, People love him, and we could do this. We have like 22 different colors of filament. Matter of fact, I'm printing. I don't know if you can see it back there, but I'm printing uh, one of our other items right now. Yes, uh, like, well, I can definitely see that there's a thing going yes then... this is this is one of my 3d printers um actually let me see if i can move this to my other yes i can okay so this is my other camera and let me kind of give you guys an idea of what we're doing here so this is one of my 3d printers okay and it is actually creating uh one of our articulated octopi which i'll show you here in just a second um wow. and the cool 
And the cool thing about these, yeah, it's it, this is kind of a, one of the the cooler things about it because this is a, a they look like plastic, but everything is made out of what's called a, a polylactic acid. It's a cornstarch based material, so this is actually all fairly biodegradable. Um, but what it is currently creating is let me find a good one here. There it is there we go. These little guys. Whoa. These are our little articulated octopi. And then do you assemble it what, at, nope. like it takes the parts? It, it, it does the whole thing? Nope. It prints the whole thing just like this. It prints it flat. Oh, so wow. um, so that it prints it like this from the bottom up. So that when it prints, all the links are actually already joined up when it's finished. So all I have to do is pry it off the board and it goes. Um, wow. Now we... We do have some more that I just created uh, that are you, I can assemble them. Mm -hmm. um, they're not quite as sturdy, but I've been uh, modeling them after the various pride flags and some of the holidays. Um, so you've got those. But the most popular ones are the the single colored ones. They're little like great fidget toys. Kids love them because they could just sit here and futz with them. I know some folks use them as computer uh, little buddies. Um, and then we've also got. His little big brother. This is a flexi dragon. How cool is that? Now he gets printed in three different parts. So we actually can do this is actually a blue and a purple dragon. I know it's not kind of oh. so, so if you wanted to custom one of those in you yeah. know colors, you could just mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you could make that for them. Yeah, absolutely. Matter of fact, when we go to conventions, we have uh two uh sizable little like uh cabinets that you would put screw you would hold screws in and we've got you know all of our wings and all of our bodies already disassembled so if somebody wants a two-color dragon if they see us at a convention we can just pop them together boom we're done wow uh, yeah so those are are really popular as well um now let me see here oh here's another if you're if you're also into hogwarts and to harry potter these are coasters that i've been making that are representative of the various houses. They have a different design. Yes. So. Hufflepuff. Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Whoop. Oops. As my <laughs> as my Gryffindor goes running away, Ravenclaw and Slytherin. Yep. And then we also include a Hogwarts crest oh. to go along cool. with that. And they all get set as they go with their own 3D printed oh, okay. little nest for them. Yeah. Um, and then... The we, other thing? we are coming up on time, so a couple oh, more Oh, sorry. Things. Very well, sorry. It's, well, it's okay. That's what I'm here to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing. Um, so we do also have... Oh, these are, these are one of our yarn bowls. That is adorable. I know so many people who do... The, I am not the knitter or the crocheter, but uh, I know many, many people who are... Yep, that was kind of... I had a lot of my friends uh, are big knitters, and they were just like, you got to make these things. So... Uh, one of our little yarn bowls. That's pale. That's mm -hmm. so, cool. so we also have those, and these are all available on our Etsy store. Um, nice. And we can and we can do all almost everything we can do in any of our twenty two colors. Oh, these, cool! We have a bunch, including glow in the dark. We also have one that uh, changes to it goes from white to purple in the sunlight. Um, yeah, we've got all kinds of fun stuff. So, okay. uh, so if anybody okay. wants a custom order, all they got to do is let us know, and we'll we can do what we can do. That is awesome. Well, I have you also down for the magic word here yes. this afternoon. So, and of course, everybody, all the information is right there. Uh, so I don't know if you want to show people what you're. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, this is one of our, our, our kind of our gag uh, in, uh, items, but okay. uh, it's for the procrastinator in your life. If you ever had okay. anybody in your life that says, you know, you ask them to do something and they, they tell you, well, I'm going to get around to it. Yeah. Well, here you go. That's the round. Here's to your it. round to it. Um, so if anybody for the next week wants to order anything and they put the, put in the magic word, uh, they will get their very own around to it. Uh, nice. It may not be this color. Um, cause we also have like, here's another one that I've done because you uh, have a whole handful of colors as we I, just saw. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, so there you go. That would be something for the procrastinator in your life. If you want to get them a nifty little holiday stocking stuffer. Yes, that is so cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. And thank you. Yeah, is there thank any you last thing you'd like to say before we let you go? No, uh, I uh, thanks again for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're doing great, especially for those of us that have been stuck by the convention or the COVID uh, shutdown. 
Because, I well, mean, I know so many people have been hit by this and have been losing out on money. So I can't thank you enough for doing something like this. Oh, yeah. No, thank you um, for saying so. Yeah, it's basically what God – that was what – Necessity is the mother, mother of, of all invention. Yes, totally. <laughs> That's what totally. I'm trying to get at. <laughs> so totally. there it is. I just was having a word train wreck in my head. <laughs> so. It's okay. I have them too. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us this Sunday. And we will we will hopefully talk to you later and enjoy Absolutely. the rest of your evening. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Cruising right along, guys. We have our next vendor. I see you down there in the wings. Samantha. Hi. I see you. I'm going to bring you in. Hi, yay! Hello, fairy lady. Hello. <clears throat> are you able to? How are you? Well? This I uh, you I will have to speak up because you you sound kind of far away. So just make sure to project, and I think we should be good. All right. <laughs> well, I hope it works. Uh, my name is Samantha, and I've been making crystal pendants uh, by hand out of polymer clay. And especially during the pandemic, I've been very busy. So I'm excited to show you what I've been making. All right. Well, um, pendants out of polymer clay. That was a lot of peas right there. Uh, where are you from, <laughs> if I may? So I'm living in Austin, Texas, but I ship all over the U.S. and uh, can make accommodations for anybody anywhere, pretty much. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and give you the screen and let's see what you've got for us today. All right. So I've been making, we can start over here. I've been making a fairy collection. So these are all handmade out of polymer clay, like I said. And um, so these can are, you um, pick them up and hold them just uh, very close and steady in front of the camera? Yeah, yes, there we go. Oh, those are beautiful. It looks like rose so quartz. Is, it is, these are all made out of um, semi-precious stones that I've either collected while I was traveling um, in Asia or the US or uh, wow. stones that I've been collecting just throughout my life. Um, so these are moonstone and onyx. This is my fairy princess collection. So these have some iridescent stones like moonstone. Um, this is another rose quartz with amethyst. And I make these all with a pocket knife and a uh, like a pointy, a pointy thing. <laughs> and, all and then I've got some woodland fairy creations over here, a little bit more of a earthy vibe. So we've got some labradorite. I hope it's able to focus well. Some labradorite yes. and some um, tiger's eye, more moonstone. And I make all the little shapes as like a little meditation for myself um lots of very close-up detail how did you and, get uh, into doing all... it huh? where did you like how did you get into doing this where did you learn how to do it they're beautiful so i used to make really really large sculptures um when i was in college i got really mm -hmm. into sculpting because i was really really depressed and i'm naturally um a huge uh extrovert basically but during that time of depression, I became very introverted and I had to find something that I was able to put my attention on and it, it was really therapeutic for me. So I started making really slow, large slow sculptures. with the camera. I, I don't know. Uh, slow, slow. Yep. There we go. But yeah, I started getting into the larger sculptures and I've always had it like a love affair with crystals for their healing properties and their metaphysical properties. Um, as well as just how gorgeous they are. So I started combining the sculptures with the, the crystals, and this is kind of where it took me. They're utterly gorgeous. I mean, and and you've got some of these that you said from traveling around in Asia and whatnot. Tell me about that a little bit. So we spent about, um, a cu cumulatively, about a year um, in Asia, me and my boyfriend, um, specifically in India and Thailand the most. And um, we were doing a mixture of like ecotourism and volunteering and kind uh -huh. of like spiritual discovery. We were like focusing on uh, meditation and yoga and Buddhism and all different sects of it and just kind of touring different, um, well, trying to realize the different perspectives of spirituality that were available. Um, so yeah, we did kind of like a mixed, a mixed journey 
And along the way, I was collecting crystals and making these pendants. So some of these were actually made in uh, India. I was backpacking and just kept a lot of crystals in my backpack. That is so cool. <laughs> Can I ask you to hold a couple of them up? Like I have a little one that looks like a tree in the top row there that we were just looking at. Uh, that one, that one? one looks, yeah, uh, middle, right in the middle. Oh, okay. I actually have two that I think look like trees. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm going to sit down with them. <clears throat> so I have, these are some earthy guys, lots of detail in the, is it, is it showing up well? It, it does once you pause and just hold the camera on it. Yes, okay. those are, so I, see, I see now not quite tree-like, but those are so cool. I can get them under the light too better. I'll go behind here. The lighting is pretty good. Oh, look at these okay, ones. Cool. Yeah, so the this lighting is my dragon's eye collection. This is where I was getting a little bit more um, like into like the dragon aesthetic. I used a lot of labradorite and tiger's eye. Um, and some darker colors, and they're a lot more like bold and kind of like intense looking. Yes, um, they are. The light shines on them very well. Um, a lot of these tiger's eyes are from, or sorry, the tiger's eyes and the um, labradorites are from India, and they're like nothing I've ever seen. They're super cosmic, and just like naturally look super magical. Um, and I love I love labradorite because of its connotations, um, in, intuition, and balancing mm -hmm. your logical mind with your more like intuitive, um, kind of introspective self. And I think to me that that's very like, you know, matches this the sorcery and the wizarddom um, in the dragon world. And then these are um, more kind of wizardy pendants. This is kind of like a more wizardy collection. Mm hmm. And those look like lapis lazuli. Right, there we go. You can see that. So yeah, most of these are completely unique. I kind of just um, honor the natural qualities of the crystals and just kind of go with it, see what the crystal tells me. And um, yeah. yeah, it usually takes me somewhere surprising. <laughs> yeah, we've got That's malachite. This is more of like a grounding stone that amplifies energy. It's the intense stone. And yes. um, the reason I put Quartz there is because they say that malachite absorbs negative energy um, and it amplifies whatever energy is around it. So the quartz kind of balances it and it like cleanses the malachite of the negative energy. So it's like the quartz and the malachite work together to make it more of like a um, neg a negativity cleanser. Yes. <laughs> so that's like yes. that's kind of what the intention with that one was for. Um, I've got it's lapis. Kind of I like that one right in the middle, the lapis one right in the middle with the gold. This one? Yeah. Yeah, it's very royal. Yeah, lapis is a gorgeous stone too. I really like lapis. It's got a connotation with the throat chakra and um, communication. So it's really great for like uh, relationship work, partner work, um, connecting with other people. Did you know that ground lapis is what uh, Michael was it Michelangelo used to paint the Sistine Chapel? I did not the, know that. Uh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds, uh, I mean, that's super bright blue um, because yeah, as, yeah, totally. obviously, right? <laughs> yeah, lapis has been used <clears throat> since very ancient times just because it's like so stunning. It's like no, like nothing else. The pigmentation in lapis, it looks like, you know, like some of the acrylic paint that we have now, but back then it was like completely otherworldly. <laughs> so that makes one of the sense most to me. expensive types, expensive things that they would grind into paint. So <laughs> yeah, we're so lucky that we have so much color diversity now that we can work with in art. Back then they didn't have that. <laughs> so yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, I love, if you want to, if you want to close up on this. Now, I might, might I, I ask? Too. How long does it take you to do a piece like this? So they're all um, they're all different. Um, I price them differently, and I try to stay conscious of time because, like I said, I kind of zone out into a meditation, and sometimes I don't know how long I'm taking. Right. Um, but I try to stay conscious of time. It usually takes between twenty minutes to an hour, and then sometimes it ends up taking like days because I just keep seeing something that I want to, you know, do more on. So I. I do my best to, to keep it somewhat <laughs> consistent, but <laughs> they kind of tell me what to do. 
Yeah, I can, I can, they all have their own personality, so I can definitely see that. <clears throat> Excuse me, hello, frog in my throat. Well, um, <laughs> your work is absolutely wonderful, and I was, Thank um, you, so much. you are most welcome. I was just kind of cruising through your, uh, cruising through your Instagram a little bit, too, where there's some really good, uh, really good close-ups there. And so I would suggest that folks go and take a look at that there. Is there anything you'd like to say to everybody? I see um, we also have you participating in the magic word. So that, um, all right, um, yes, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to throw in a, an extra little stone in there and I'll just be kind of intuitive about it. What, I mean, I know everybody acts with stones differently, so it'll just be a little gift from my heart. Um, what kind of you get? Oh. <laughs> All right. well, that, is, that is wonderful and thoughtful and I love it. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and coming on the show and showing your, your amazing work. So, and it's just so cool that it, it's, <laughs> yeah, you are most welcome. Um, have a, enjoy the rest of your Sunday evening. You too. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that brings us here to our last vendor of the day, guys. We're just cruising right along this evening, aren't we? So our last vendor is a really fun one. I'm very excited to have them on the show, James Bay Distillers. And I see you down there, Lee, so I'm going to bring you in. Um, and I just, I, I want to give the extra little shout out to you because everything you guys are about to see in here right now, I can personally attest to as we have been, been there, tasted these things. So <clears throat> uh, we were, we were brought along by the house Lou about a month ago. I think it is now that we came to see you guys. So Lee, yeah. if you will, um, yeah, please introduce yourself to everybody and tell us a little bit about what you do. And I'm just going to turn the screen over to you here. Okay. Um, I'm Lee with James Bay Distillers. Um, She's a little out of screen, but there's Shorty. She's <laughs> visiting with us today up here, as was uh, in the mood, and she's in the corner, so. <laughs> um, but I wanted to go over, um, we have two whiskeys and two gems. We're located on the south end of Kingfield in Everett, Washington. Um, our very first product that launched September 2019 is our Galloping Goose Whiskey. Um, she's a Canadian whiskey. But she's a 100% corn recipe with no additives. Uh, she has notes of caramel, vanilla, a baked chocolate that comes from the char on the barrel with a light honey finish. And the reason that I mentioned that she has um, a baked chocolate note from the barrel is because with her sister, the Cadboro, uh, we started with the same base whiskey, but we wanted to play with that chocolate note without going into a liqueur. So we infused her with a um, with a cacao that is a naturally sustainable, traceable. We can go all the way back to the farmer and field in Ecuador where she came from. Um, so after we did that cold infusion, we filtered everything out at a 0.5 micron. So she's, she's not a liqueur, she's a clear whiskey. Uh, but we played up that chocolate note, so she's a has a little bit of a chocolate note to her. Going from our whiskeys to our gin, um, this is our gin tree gin. Mm -hmm. We took our London Dry and put her in a bourbon cognac barrel. This one's twelve months. When you were here, I think we only had the six month. Uh, yeah, I think so. <clears throat> yeah, this is the twelve month version. So you can see that nice amber color that we've gotten out of the barrel. And mm. um, also, when you were here, did we have our? Did we have her official labels, or were we still doing COVID labels at the time? I actually do not remember, but what I do know is that looks like incentive to me uh, <laughs> to, yes. to head away again. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that wasn't there last time. Hmm, tasty, tasty. Yes, very tasty, tasty. So uh, we took our London dry, put her in the barrel. So now she, um, when you take that first sip, tastes a little bit like gin, but then you immediately go into all those big stone fruits, raisin kind of flavors that you get with her cognac. 
and then a little hint of juniper on the end. Um, so the one that you tasted, this one tastes even more, uh, has even more of that cognac flavor in it. That, that six month, the 12 month has even more of that. So a great, great gin. Our, our last gin is our summer gin number five. This is our citrus forward gin. She, um, again, a cold infusion with orange, kumquat, tangerine, mandarin, and orange zest. And again, filtered at a half micron level, so there's not any that's left in there. Um, and you can see- so, uh, so at home, because I know that I definitely was not uh, not educated in the meaning of some of these words, and you guys did such a good job. You just know your product and business inside and out. And um, what does it? What do some of these terms mean? Like cold press and um, that. So a cold infusion means that. So when you put it through the still, you're heating all that liquid, and it comes out hot. Um, like at the end of a run, you're around 205 degrees. Um, so you let it cool because if we put orange blossom in the still, mm -hmm. it evaporates. It's very volatile, but, and we want that flavor to stay in the product. So we do a cold infusion. So it just means that the, the product is room temperature when we add the ingredients. That way the, the flavors actually pick up and boy, let me tell you that, uh, that is the one that I think that I came home with because we all got stuff from our taste testing that you guys had. Um, and I came home with that orange flavored citrusy. Yeah, that was, that was delicious. <laughs> so it went very fast. Um, um, yes, which speaking of which, um, tell a, a little bit, because that is how we got introduced to you guys was through your, um, through your showroom taste testing. Tell a little bit about that, if you will. Um, yeah, so actually one thing that um, we have implemented is we, right now we are scheduling, and you guys are the first to hear, private tastings. Okay. So you can have up to eight people because COVID rules apply. Mm -hmm. So you can have up to eight people. It's um, a $50 reservation fee and then $15 per person. And that $15 covers one tasting and one cocktail of choice for each person. And then any additional cocktails or food, or if you want to bring in food, we're okay with that. Um, but you can call and, and schedule. And the, um, the time frame is an hour and a half. Nice. If you need a longer time frame because, you know, business or family or whatever, then you know, just let us know and we'll work it out. So, and your guys, what, is, what are your showroom hours there? We are open Tuesday to Saturday, 12 to 5. And then um, a lot of times, like today, Sunday, we're, it's our Sunday, Monday is our weekend, but a lot of times we're here at the distillery. So, um, and we understand that everybody has Sunday, Monday off. Right. So um, just give us a call because we're usually like within 15 minutes um, and we can set up a time to meet you over here. Um, now, can I ask, though, what is this little trophy that I see there on the counter with you? <laughs> so the Galloping Goose was our, let me see if I can get it closer to the camera, is our first whiskey, our first release. And I, I love that running goose. <laughs> it's so adorable. <laughs> Thank you. The very first competition that uh, she was judged in was the 2019 John Barley Corn, and we took Old. our very first competition with our very first product. Wow. So yes, that's we're super stoked. Our, um, we are a U.S. Canadian company. Our, um, my husband and I are U.S. citizens with Canadian work permits because originally we were going to open in Canada first and um, they'll have to come in and hear the story of how we ended up down here first. But <laughs> um, our label designers are in Canada because in order to sell in Canada, our back label has to be um, English and French. Oh, interesting. So Canadian label makers know more about American label requirements than American label makers know about Canadian label requirements. 
So that's why our, our label makers are in Canada, because they understand those sets of rules. Um, and we are their first client to ever take gold, first competition, first product. That is amazing. <laughs> We're super excited. And right now, the other reason we came in was to check on our latest. We took our the whiskey that we use for the galloping goose uh -huh. and we put it in one of those bourbon cognac barrels that we used for the gin. Yes. And she's been there for a year and she's getting, uh, we are getting ready to bottle her. So um, she's going to, it's going to be the same label, but it's going to be blue. So her, her nickname is Blue Goose. <laughs> well, that's because in March, we also have sherry barrels, 40-year-old uh, sherry barrels from Spain. And our goose that is sitting in the sherry barrel um, will come out. She's sleeping right now. She'll be ready in um, probably April. And uh, we're referring to her as the green goose because her label will be green, but she'll be the sherry barrel. Nice. Well, yeah. so if I now if I may, because I know that you are physically here in Everett, Washington, where people right. come down to your showroom and do the thing. Um, do you, are you able to ship if somebody wanted to order? I don't have no idea how that even works. So if every state has their own rules. Okay. Uh, we are currently have product available in eight different states. Okay. So um, the best way to ask us is um, send us a message through Facebook or email us directly. Okay. And then we can tell you if we sell in your state. We can currently sell in, let's see, Washington State, Alaska, Nevada, North Dakota. I'm missing one. Um, New Hampshire. We are in the Virginia ABC store, which stands for Alcohol Beverage Control. They're a control state. Okay. Um, but that's where we originated and where most of our investors are located. Um, so we have the Galloping Goose and the Summer Gin are available in Virginia stores. There is a process. You have to, um, you actually have to call your local store and they have it sent up from Richmond, which is the capital of Virginia in the southern part of the state but they have it to your store in a, in a couple of days. Um, but uh, Illinois, uh, we sell in uh, Illinois. My husband went to college in Chicago, so. Um, and uh, other states are coming on all the time through our distributors. Um, but like, like we said, every state has their own rules and regulations. Like uh, Washington, D.C., we're available in Washington, D.C. We can ship there. Okay. Yeah. They're kind of like the Wild Wild West. They're like, sure, you ship, ship whatever you want. Um, Alaska would like to ship anything except these um, tribal villages decided they don't want to allow alcohol, so they gave us the handful of zip codes that apply, and our programmers took care of that. So, um, but if you want to know if we ship to your state, just uh, contact us and we'll tell you if we ship to that state or not. Well, now before we get here to the end of the show, might I ask, what do you think of all of your things is a good recommended starting uh, starting selection? Uh, like which was which is the one you would start with first? If yeah, you were maybe perhaps your your most popular one, or just the one that you think is because sometimes if so if you are not a connoisseur of alcohol, for example, you you could taste a wine that costs five hundred dollars a bottle and not know the difference between if it costs right. you know ten dollars a bottle like right. me, for example so, um, <laughs> our most sold to date is our galloping goose and that's because she's been out the longest um i think the second behind her is the summer gym but gentry is coming on strong um, all of our products, our premium products, we make them to be sipping spirits so you can drink them right out of the bottle. Um, that doesn't mean you pour yourself an eight ounce tumbler and <laughs> drink it. Um, you know, you would have, a, you know, just a, what we, what you call a finger or two fingers. So yes. finger is literally you put it at the bottom of the glass and that's the line that you go to. So that's like one finger or two fingers. So that is an ounce to 
two ounces is kind of what it translates to. Um, but you can also uh, mix them into cocktails. Um, we do carry the raft products that we use to make our cocktails in store. In fact, the distillery elf called. She's going to be here in by the 22nd for sure. And she's bringing some new products with her and some new and a new syrup. Mm, yes. Tell me about that just real quick, if you will. So we have the Demerara syrup, which is used to make a traditional old fashioned. We have the smoked tea vanilla syrup, which gives your old fashioned a little smoky taste to it. And these are meant to be mixed with the alcohols there. Yes. These come, um, these are actually made down in Portland, Oregon oh uh, by a uh, craft syrup maker, syrup and bitters maker. Um, we have lemon ginger, which goes really great with the summer gin to make a ginger Rogers, which is ounce and a half of summer gin, tablespoon of lemon ginger syrup, um, about five ounces of ginger ale and fresh mint. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> uh, it's, like my, it's like my fave. And then we also carry the orange bitters. Uh, Distillery Elf told me the new syrup that's coming. I'm so super excited. Cranberry five spice. I know. <laughs> I know. Right? I can't wait. I can't wait. That's so okay. I've, I've been like, you know, little wheels are turning. Um, use her for an old fashioned, but um, also uh, have some other ideas for her uh, to use her in some drinks. All right. Well, thank you so much. Oh, wow. I see I see a whole bunch of um <laughs> uh ha. I, you, you please send Jen. <laughs> you made some, some funny comments. <laughs> well, if you're local, if you want to shop online, you can um select store pickup. Um, just know that when you do that, you will have to show your driver's license because you have to make sure your teenager is not trying to pick up for you. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm conveniently here for mom and dad. Yeah. Not going to fly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show today. And now I'm excited. And uh, once we are out of quarantine, we may have to come see you guys again. So that would be awesome. And uh, would love to come back and maybe next time we'll make a cocktail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, def oh, that would be that would be super fun to see. I would like that. So yeah, well, it depends on how to do a tasting and how to make a cocktail. That would be super cool. We we shall have to converse after the show, me thinks. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, everybody, that brings us to the end of the show. Uh, thank you for tuning in, watching. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe button. All of our vendors here today. Uh, you can find all of the information in the low bar, it, the, the expandable section, the description depends on where you're watching from. And if they have the little magic mushroom next to them, that is that means that they are sending uh, out with their with any purchases from them. You get a special little bonus gift. So keep that in mind. The magic word is wing envy, all one word. And it is Sunday, so that means we will be back with you guys uh, this Wednesday for Fay News. We are sorry that we missed us last week. Everybody was under the weather. so um, But we will be back here in a couple of days. And with that said, I hope everybody had a great weekend, you guys. And we will talk to you here in a couple of days. Bye-bye.